Hello, and welcome to another edition of Sporty's Flight Simulator product reviews. Today we are going to review a digital product that we developed in-house, and this is the Sporty's Scenario Add-on, or Intro Add-on, for X-Plane. This gives you three scenarios pre-programmed so that you click a couple buttons and jump right into said scenarios and that way it's a quicker way for you to get into the digital aircraft and start flying these maneuvers or scenarios and get uh, some training or a couple iterations under your belt. So we'll begin, here we are in a Cessna 172 at Sporty's Airport, India 6-9er. I've already installed the plugin, which we have a blog and another video outlining. So we're assuming that you have everything up and running, you've installed it. Let's go ahead and use the scenario loader. So I'm going to go ahead and head on up to the plugins page. You'll see the uh, choose scenario on. And here we have a user interface that we can move around and click through the different scenarios, steep turns, S turns, or the ILS approach to land. Now here we have a couple screen grabs from Sporty's instrument rating course. So this is video on how to fly an instrument approach. We've taken some screen grabs to keep it uh, short and concise. And we've got these screen grabs here showing you how you fly an approach uh, for an ILS. Here is the one we'll be flying today, which is the Lunkin 2-1 left approach. We'll be on a heading of 280 to start out, 3,000 feet. You'll see our nav one, glide slope is high and localizer is to our right. And our heading is 280 uh, with an inbound rating of 205. As we get closer, you'll see that uh, localizer starts to come in, the vertical needle if you will. So we'll keep flying 280 at 3000, roughly until we're about one dot away and begin our turn inbound for 205. We'll fly in on the localizer. Uh, heading bug is preset for 205 to make it a little easier. And then we'll start to see our glide slope, the horizontal needle, start to come down. As that needle gets to about uh, one circle above center, we're gonna go ahead and prepare to throw in some flaps, first 10 degrees, and then do uh, an instrument approach. So that instrument approach will be at about 90 knots. We'll continue a vertical descent of about 500 feet per minute, and we'll just keep that vertical and horizontal lines aligned, and we'll be good to go. So when we prepare to fly, we have preset locations for all your controls to make sure when you jump in the digital aircraft, which is flying, uh, you don't nose up from having too much throttle, or the flaps are retracted so you don't uh, nose up. Once those are set, you just jump in here, you then earn the flight controls, or take the flight controls, and it's off to flying. So as you can see, here we are on a heading of 280 at about 3,000 feet, and cruising just over 90 knots. We'll see nav one, our localizer is right of center, to be expected, and our glide slope is above us. So from that quick briefing we clicked through, we know we're gonna fly heading 280, until we see that vertical needle start to move towards the center on nav one. It takes, I'd say, about 30 to 40 seconds from the beginning of the maneuver. And then once we're on the heading of 205, which you'll notice our little heading bug is already set to that, we'll keep flying that heading in until we intercept glide slope. Now you'll see on the X-Plane 530, the GPS on the right side, we have a direct to Lunkin. So on the top right of that screen, it gives us our distance. And right now, since we're flying pretty much perpendicular, it's not really going down. You'll see once we're flying inbound at 205, it'll decrease. Okay, so our needle is moving. Let's get ready to roll to the left to heading 205. All this while we're maintaining 3,000 feet and trying to keep our airspeed about 90 knots, maybe a little bit more. All right, so my localizer needle has rolled through center, so I'm gonna roll out a little bit to the left of 205 to recapture that localizer, and then once it's straight up and down, we'll fly that heading of 205. Or I should say bearing. We have to make sure we account for whatever wind is working with us. All right, so here we are. We are on localizer. 
We're a little low, so I'm going to add just a little bit of power and get us back up to 3,000. And as you can see, the glide slope or the horizontal needle on Nav 1 is starting to come down. So when that needle is just about at the uh, horizontal line or dead center, and that's right about when I'm going to start adding flaps. Uh, as you can see in this scenario, we've got some nice clouds, so we are in the thick of the soup right now. Uh, no reference to ground. So we'll keep flying until that glide slope comes on center. And it looks to be we're about eight and a half miles out from the airport. And minor corrections on our heading. Don't want to uh, do too much and get off course. All right, so there's my first set of flaps and trying to get the aircraft uh, normalized. Throwing a little bit more power in, our airspeed dropped to 85. I like it to be about 90. And glide slope is uh, about to drop beneath us, so let's start our descent with a goal of 500 feet per minute in 90 knots. And I am just getting my trim set for this approach. Aircraft is challenging me a little bit, but here we go. We're stabilizing. All right, so we are descending through 3,000. We're now at 2,800. Now, Lunkin Airport, I know, is, and I'm going to round up here, Lunkin Airport is about 500 feet MSL. I know for the ILS approach, we get about a 250-foot buffer, aka if we don't see that airport, when we're 250 feet off the ground, we're going around. So 500 feet elevation plus another 250 means that 750 feet in this scenario, if I did not see that airport, I'd go full power and I'd go around based off the approach plate. We know from pre-programming and from our briefing that the clouds are going to break out at about 1,500 feet MSL. I bring that up because we're now just passing through 2,500, so at about 1,000 feet we're expecting to start to see the airport a little bit better. In a real life scenario we'd say uh, through 2,500 go around at 750 feet. So as we're flying in, you'll see on nav one, sometimes the needle will sway a little bit to the right, a little to the left, or up and down for a glide slope. As we get closer and closer to the airport, and as you can see on the Garmin 530 representation on the top right of the screen, it says we're about 5.2 miles out. When we started this maneuver, we were about 10 miles out. As the cone for the localizer and the glide slope gets tighter and tighter, we want our changes, our heading changes, our vertical speed changes to get smaller and smaller because that cone is getting consistently smaller. Therefore, the bounds of right and left are getting smaller and smaller. So just worth mentioning, we want to make smaller and smaller indications. If we banked all the way to the left and went on a southerly heading, I'm sure that needle would swing out very, very quickly. So again, we're just trying to make five degree changes off of heading 205 to re-intercept that needle. All while scanning our airspeed, we're at about 92 knots, looking good. Vertical speed's right around 500. And as you can see on uh, the panel, our outer, meter, outer marker, the blue button is blinking right now, similar to what would happen in real life. Confirmation of our location on the approach. All right, we're on heading. Vertical speed is looking good, nav 1 is looking good, airspeed is good, and there's the cloud break at about 1,500 feet MSL. I can just faintly see the airport, so I'm going to keep flying uh, based off nav 1 just to get us closer to make sure we've got uh, significant visual contact with the airport. And as you can see on the GPS, we're about 2.8 miles out. Right around 2 is when I'm going to transition to a landing configuration. We'll throw in the next two sets of flaps and get our power setting for our approach speed of about 65 knots. So let's keep flying the glide slope. I like the way NAV1 is looking. I like our vertical speed. Our heading is looking great. Air speed is great. And according to the GPS, we're about 2.1 nautical miles out. Alright, let's go ahead and start getting ready to throw in the next set of flaps. 
There's our 20 degrees, okay. And there's 30 degrees. So we wanna make sure we continue the descent. We wanna make sure we've exchanged airspeed. As you can see, our airspeed has dropped down to about 72, 75. Uh, nav one got a little bit off, but we're back on glide slope. Localizer looks good. Airspeed looks good. And my vertical speed is about 500 feet a minute again. So we are looking good. And as I mentioned earlier, about 750 is our go around rate. So if at this point we didn't see the aircraft, we're at 750 feet. We'd execute a go around, but I can uh, confirm we've got the airport in sight. And now I'm going to transition to visually flying this approach rather than the NAV-1, just as if I was uh, flying a typical final on a VFR day. So let's go for about 65 knots approach speed. And as you can see by the light indicators on the left of the runway, red above, white below, we're looking good. And runway is made. Slowly start removing power and pitching the nose up for that flare. All right, touch down, and we'll slowly start applying full brakes. Applied a little bit more left than intended, and we'll come to a full stop. All right, so that was uh, the ILS 21 left at Lunkin Maneuver. We could jump into one of the other two maneuvers, uh, but then this video would be about 30 minutes long and we'd like to keep it a little shorter than that. So we hope you'll enjoy this plugin, these preset and pre-configured maneuvers in a Cessna 172. We look forward to the community's feedback. We've also got a few more ideas similar to this on the drawing board. And uh, from all of us here at Sporty's Pilot Shop, thanks for tuning in and have fun digitally flying.